Hi, I'm Doug Lay with Serving Beyond Borders, and thanks for joining us in another video on learning about what we're calling the radical Christian life. And today we're talking about one of the most important things you can learn in your walk with Jesus, and that's spiritual warfare. We're discussing spiritual warfare, and I'm starting off with you know some different videos. We're teaching different quotes, and I love this quote by George Patton. I am a soldier. I fight where I am told, and I win where I fight. Oh, that's so good. Now let's put it in the spiritual warfare terms. We're soldiers of Christ. We literally are his followers and we fight the spiritual battles that we are told to fight and we can win because of the victory that he won for us on the cross. So let's dive right in and learn some more about spiritual warfare. The key of spiritual warfare always, anything you're, if you're ever in a battle, you always want to know your enemies. Who am I battling? And you can know this clearly from uh, Ephesians chapter two. It's one of my favorite uh, passages just to understand our enemy because it says in Ephesians 2 verse 1 that you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. And what you get in that passage are the two areas that we're battling. The first is the demon, the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the chief of the demons, and that we have an enemy who's out there trying to take you down. Understand that. First Peter 5, 8 talks about how we have an adversary, the devil, who roams, roams around like a roaring lion, seeking those whom he may devour. You have somebody who's trying to ruin your life. So don't just be one of those Christians like, oh, it's all okay, it's all okay, and then boom, you're not prepared, and Satan takes you out. So many Christians leave the defe live defeated lives. Too many do. Not all of them, but too many do because they don't understand the spiritual warfare they're in and Satan gets to them. But you're aware, you're engaged, but you also want to have to understand the, the battleground we're at, the world, the course of this world, the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that's now working in the sons of disobedience. I love this German word, zeitgeist. I just, just saying it sounds like a warfare word, right? Zeitgeist. <laughs> and it literally means the spirit of the age, the, the times that we're living in. And this world, the culture that you're in, no matter what country you're watching from, you need to understand that this world is trying to take you down. And that's why 1 John, the, the Apostle John warns us, do not love the world or the things in the world. For if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And, and John paints for us in saying there, there's a division. Those of us who are Christians can't love the world. And so, so many Christians stumble and they don't see the victory in their life because they're living too much in this world instead of above the world. Because Christ tells us, and, and, and we see here from his disciple Paul in Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, that we're supposed to set our minds on things above. We live above this world. Now, I want to teach you a phrase, and oh, put this one in your theological blender and let it stir around for the rest of your life, because you will use it a lot if you engage in spiritual warfare. I think it was Jack Hayford who said it. I haven't verified it, but I love this when I first heard it. You can't cast out the flesh, and you can't disciple a demon. We live in the radical middle here in, in Serving Beyond Borders, and we're teaching that to you. And, and this is the perfect radical middle verse right here because so many people don't understand the spiritual warfare of the spirit part of demons that are out there. And you have to deal with demons in your life. And then, but to balance that, you have to understand discipleship. And we live in that radical middle. So how do we engage in spiritual warfare so that we can win? And, and again, I want to tell you something. I'm not just teaching you part of living the radical Christian life. I'm teaching you a disciple who's going to go and make disciples because we make disciples who make disciples. So learn this so you can go help set others free and give them the ability through the Holy Spirit, watch our video on the Holy Spirit, to live the victorious Christian life. So let's get into it. Two ways, two ways to engage in warfare and win the battle Christ has already won the victory for. Deliverance and discipleship. Deliverance and discipleship. Deliverance comes from that great spiritual warfare passage, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. So in this passage, it's talking about how our wrestle is not against flesh, but it's against principalities and spiritual forces, and that we're supposed to take every thought captive to obedience of Christ. Because it's reminding us the battlefield's the mind. 
It's the mind and we need delivered because Satan has got in and he's messed up our life, mind and he's messed up our lives. When we talk about being delivered from demonic forces, it's not like there's some little demon living inside, you know, like, get out, get out, we gotta get out. You know, people make fun and think, oh, this demonic activity. No, no. Why do you keep doing the same sin that you keep falling and stumbling and you go, I'm not going to do that ever again. And then the next week you just get right back into it and stuff. Maybe it's because there is a demonic influence in your mind that you need to be delivered from. How do we do deliverance ministry? I go all over the world and I've seen all sorts of deliverance ministries done. And there's no one way, but I walk people through this little acronym to help see people set free and it's worked for years and it can work for you. The first thing is I love to talk to somebody who's stumbling, they're falling in their life, they're not living the victorious Christian life. I say first, is there a sin in your life? Let's just be honest. You're not seeing victory. Why? Because maybe Satan has a right to be there because you're living in sin. And, and that's that's just so radical for some people. Like what? And I, no, if you're living disobedient to the commands of Jesus, that means you're not following your Lord's words, you're following Satan's words, and you've given him now permission to mess up your life. And you need to turn from your sin. It's called repentance and get rid of that. And that's literally a way to be delivered, of just saying, I'm not going to do that anymore. I've seen this so many times. I could go on with story after story, but for time's sake, I'm just going to say to you, is there an area where you're not living according to God's word. Stop, ask God's forgiveness, and he will forgive you. He's already taken it to the cross. He's already forgiven you. You need to acknowledge your sin and now start walking in purity. The second thing is what we call open doors. Open doors are just areas of your life, things that you might have done or are doing now where you're giving open doors or permission. You're dabbling in things that you shouldn't do. You're going in and living more like the world than you are for Christ. And in those open doors, Satan is getting permission. He's getting an activity to come and mess with your life because you're basically giving him permission. And that's where you, you need to close those doors right now. One of the great open doors you may have never thought about, who are your friends? Who are your friends? You're only going to go so far in your Christian life by those who you surround yourself with. And if you're with people of the world and they're speaking your lives and you're listening to what they're speaking and stuff, you've given an open door to start listening to Satan to get into your mind. That's why you know, bad company, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, corrupts good morals. That's an example of an open door. Instead of surrounding yourself with believers who are living the radical Christian life, will speak truth into your life. The third one is probably the biggest. It's the area of unforgiveness. I encourage you, if you're not living the radical Christian life, if you're not seeing victory, if you're not being used by God to set other captives free, it might be because of this area. Jesus, he didn't mince words. Look at Matthew 6, and Matthew 6, 9 through 12, Jesus, 9 through 13, he gives the Lord's Prayer. And we all know the Lord's Prayer. If you've been a follower of Jesus for any time, you've probably learned the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You've probably heard that. But do you know what he says right after that, verse 14? If you forgive others, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you don't forgive others, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you. Yes, that's what it says. You look it up yourself. Don't just trust me. Look at God's word for yourself. It also says it in Mark chapter 11, verse 25. So this isn't just one isolated verse. Jesus taught... Forgive because you've been forgiven. And we do this exercise. Sit, get alone with God. Sit alone and just start writing down and praying, saying, Lord, is there anyone I haven't forgiven? And I can tell you story after story of men and women who will just come back and tell us how they just started weeping because they hadn't forgiven somebody in their heart. And yes, some of you have gone through horrible things. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's going to be just something, oh yeah, I just forgive. No, it's a gut-wrenching experience, but it's an experience that will set you free. You have to forgive others if you want to experience the victorious Christian life and get rid of any demonic stronghold that may be in your life. And then last is lineage or generational sins. It's so amazing how an alcoholic father will have an alcoholic son or a an adulterous mother will pass on immorality to her daughter or granddaughter. And you, you, look, I'm looking at you right now. 
It's at this moment that chain is broken. You're going to set a new course so that your descendants are going to have the blessings of the Lord flow through them. Because you're going to look at your life and you're going to examine what has been passed on. What kind of demonic influence has been passed on? I know that's kind of a harsh way of saying it, but you have to be honest. Are there strongholds in your family? Are there sin areas in your family? And I've used this word stronghold for a couple of times. It comes from 2 Corinthians 10. Uh, fortresses or strongholds where it comes from. Uh, strongholds, just areas where your family just can't seem to break free from. Maybe there's generational poverty. Maybe there's generational lying. Maybe there's all sorts of strongholds, generational greed, whatever. You break that right now by just being honest, getting alone with God, going through S-O-U-L, looking at this. Is there sin in my life? Are there open doors? What am I listening to that Satan is getting into my mind? Is there unforgiveness? Do I need to break the chains that have been passed on in my family? That's what we mean by deliverance. And then discipleship comes from Ephesians chapter 6, the other great warfare passage. And in here, you can learn about the armor of God. And, and I could go all into this, but I just say, if you want to live the radical Christian life, focus especially on the big three. The big three, the weapon that literally Jesus, I mean, Paul calls in Ephesians, the shield of faith with which we can put out the flaming arrows of the evil one, Satan. What are these flaming arrows? Satan's like shooting arrows. Well, what does that mean? The lies. Jesus calls them in John 8, the father of lies. That's how Satan tempted Eve, by lying and deceiving. And so he's going to shoot these lies. You're not good enough. You can't live the radical Christian life. Who do you think you are? And you hold up that shield of faith. Man, I'm a son or daughter of God. Watch our video where we talk about knowing who you are and correct thinking. And you hold up that shield of faith and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, what is this noise I'm listening to by saying, get out of here. That roaring lion will become a little pussy cat when you hold up that shield of faith. And then the second thing is the sword of the Spirit, it says in Ephesians chapter 6, which is the Word of God. You have a weapon not to be defensive, but to be offensive, to attack, to go after him. And that's what Jesus used when he had went after Satan in the temptation. Satan's trying to get Jesus to stumble, trying to give up his right to, to claim what he had come to buy with his death and resurrection. And Satan couldn't win. Why? Because Jesus took out his sword, which was for Jesus the book of Deuteronomy he quoted three times. You use that book to defeat Satan. There you go. The word of God, the sword of the spirit, to win the victory and claim the promises Jesus has bought for us with his blood. And then last, with all things it says in Ephesians 6, 18, praying in the spirit. Not some crazy, oh, praying in the spirit. No, it means praying according to God's will. Praying, letting the Holy Spirit speak and intercede for you according to Romans 8.26. You do those big three and start being discipled and learning what it means to live by faith. Learning what it means to you, the sword of the Spirit. Learning about prayer, which we're going to have videos on all of these. Because those are the big three in living the radical Christian life. Oh, this is a lot of stuff and I'm trying to condense it all down. Because remember, in living the radical Christian life, we want to make it simple. Spiritual warfare really is. You can't cast out the flesh and you can't disciple a demon. We need to see deliverance and we need to see discipleship. And it's you, you who are part of living the radical Christian life, are being called right now by Jesus Christ to make sure you've been delivered, to make sure you're entering in discipleship, so then that now you can go and make disciples who make disciples. So I ask, are you engaged in the battle? Are you living just a normal Christian life, stumbling, falling, but you know, sometimes going to church? Or are you living the radical Christian life? Hi, we're Josiah and Larissa Lay with Serving Beyond Borders. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like, share, and comment to keep the conversation going. We'd love to hear from you. Also, make sure to subscribe below as we journey together on making disciples who make disciples.